Hello, this is John from TC Math Academy. And in this particular video, we're gonna be talking about the GCF. Now, what is a GCF? Well, it stands for the greatest common factor. So what we wanna do here is factor out the GCF in this expression. Now, hopefully most of you out there can do this uh, rather easily. You're like, oh, I can do this one, two, three. But here's the thing. Uh, first of all, I want you to put your answer into the comment section. But second of all, for those of you that are like, oh, this is easy. Imagine if you had to tutor someone in this, right? How would you explain how to do this problem? Okay. So it's always a good idea to ask that question because if you can uh, teach something, then you really, really know something. Now, a lot of you are going to be able to do this, but you're, you may not know exactly why you're doing or you know what's kind of going on, even though you might get the right answer. So I'm going to challenge you to kind of write your little procedure to find the greatest common factor given uh, a certain algebraic expression. Okay, so again, I'm gonna show you the correct answer in just one second, and then we're gonna talk uh, completely about this particular problem. Also, if you need math help with the course you're taking, test prep or homeschooling, make sure to check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to my program in the description below. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so let's just go ahead and take a look at the answer. So we have 2y minus 30. We want to factor out the GCF. What is that? Now, here, the directions is factor the GCF, but effectively, we want to factor out the GCF. What is this equivalent to if we factor this expression? Let's go ahead and take a look at the answer right now. So here it is. That expression is equal to 2 times y minus 15, and the 2 here would be the greatest common factor, okay? But the answer, the entire answer is 2 times y minus 15. Now, if you got this right, that's you know very, very good. Shows me that you're on the right track when it comes to factoring. So let's give you a nice little happy face and A plus, A 100%, and a few stars so you can tell your friends and family that you know how to deal with the greatest common factor uh, problem. Okay, they'll be so excited. They'll be like, well, the next time I run into math difficulty with the GCF, I'll call you up. Okay, so um, let's go ahead and get into what the GCF is and effectively how to do this problem. Now, this is a big topic, greatest common factor. You know, it kind of goes in line with some of this basic arithmetic stuff that most of us learned and a lot of us have uh, forgotten, like how to find the LCD, lowest common multiple, greatest common factor. But if you're taking any sort of algebra course, you must know how to factor. It is critical. If you cannot factor expressions, okay, like for example, something like this, if you cannot factor, then you're going to be in big trouble. And uh, matter of fact, I'll go as far as saying that you're not going to even be able to pass uh, your algebra course, right? It's that critical. So if you're struggling with factoring, you've got to get help. But let's just real quick, take a look at factoring, okay? So in algebra, when you start to learn uh, um, how to factor, and there's all different types of situations, the first thing you need to understand is how to factor out their greatest common factors. That's what we're, what we're talking about right, uh, right now. Now, after that, you'll generally start learning about uh, trinomials, quadratic trinomials, things that might look like this, 3x squared minus 9x plus 1. So this is a big topic, so we call this uh, quadratic trinomials, degree two trinomials. And there's two different cases here, case one, case two. So once you master that, then you move on to other situations like special uh, factoring rules, things like the difference of two squares, a squared minus b squared. Uh, for example, there's other special factoring uh, uh, rules that you need to know. And then there's even things like group factoring techniques. So factoring is a huge topic in algebra. It is critical, critical, critical that you know how to factor. But it all starts with your ability to factor out the greatest common factor. So Given any algebraic expression, you always want to factor out the GCF, okay? So this is a real super easy problem. But again, if you're struggling with this, well, of course, you're going to be struggling with the rest of this stuff. If you need help with any of this, I do have additional videos on my YouTube channel, but my full instruction, if you really, really want to learn this stuff, I would uh, definitely check out like my Algebra 1 course. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into this problem. 
So what we're talking about is obviously the GCF. Now in math, the great thing about math is that terms or just, uh, you know, things like the LCD, LCM, GCF, if we have like a vocabulary word, right? It's like it means something. So here, this is the greatest common factor. All right, so let's just review this word factor. What does it mean to have a factor? Well, if I have 10, for example, 10 is the same thing as two times five, right? So two and five are factors of 10, okay? Because the product of two and five is 10, all right? So here's a little factor tree. So just basic kind of, you know, mathematical concepts here. So the factors of 10 would be two and five, and of course, one and 10 are also factors of 10, all right? So that's what a factor is, just in case you forgot. All right, so we got that word down. Oh, it's so the greatest common factor. Uh, again, we just reviewed what a factor is. Now, common means what? Well, it means the same, right? And then greatest means what? Well, it means the greatest. So it's the greatest thing, these uh, greatest factor uh, that two or more um, either variable terms or numbers have in common. All right, so that's effectively what the greatest common factor is. But let's take a look at it. It will make more sense if we look at each of these terms here. So here we have 2y minus 30. So I can look at this 2y, and let's look at the factors of 2y. So that would be 2 times 1, because 2 is a prime number, so 2 times 1 times y. These are all the factors of 2y. And then for 30, what are the prime factors of 30? So anytime you're dealing with the GCF, it's not necessary for you to factor out uh, all the, um, to have all the prime factors, but it, it comes in handy for sure, okay? So here, 30, until you get better at finding the GCF. But anyway, so let's just kind of continue on here. So 30, the prime factors of 30 would be three times five times two, right? So three times five is 15, 15 times two is 30. So now we're uh, looking at all the factors, all right? So here, I got the full view here. Okay, I got all these factors. Now let's go ahead and take a look at uh, whether these um, two numbers and terms here have common factors. So let's see, this is two, one, and y. This is three, five, and two. I'm like, hey, wait a minute. They both have a two in common, okay? So this is kind of where we're going, right? Uh, to identify the greatest common factor, you need to be able to factor these individual terms and be looking for uh, not only common factors, but the greatest common factor if they uh, share a greatest common factor. Sometimes they do not, all right? So let's go ahead and take a look at this uh, problem a little bit more in detail now. So we have 2y minus 30. So here's the factors. So we identified uh, the only common factor. So of course, this the 2 is going to be the greatest common factor. As a matter of fact, it's the only factor. Okay, so if the question was, what is the GCF? Well, the GCF is equal to 2. But really what we want to do is factor out the uh, GCF of this expression. Okay, so we know it's two. And here, basically, the GCF, when you're factoring out the GCF, it's the reverse of the distributive property. Okay, let me kind of go up here real quick. I'll, I'll scroll right down just one second. Let me just uh, do this because it's the problem. You need to, it's very much like arithmetic. You know, you can't learn division until you master multiplication, right? So you can't do things like this, all right, until you master the times tables. You're like, oh yeah, three uh, times nine is 27, right? So three times nine is 27. This is, you have to learn this before you can do this, right? Now, same thing in uh, algebra. You need to uh, understand how to, um, uh, I'm trying to think here <laughs> as I'm writing. You need to understand how to multiply, excuse me, before you factor, all right? So here, if I had two times x plus three, what is that equal to? Well, that's equal to two x plus six, all right? This is the application of the distributive property. Now, if I wanted to factor this, I'm thinking, oh, okay, um, this was the result of two times x plus three. So I'm going in this direction is factoring. All right, so you can't learn how to factor until you have mastered multiplication. Same thing with arithmetic. Okay, can't do division until you get multiplication down. 
All right, so a lot going on here, but again, uh, you know, factoring is such a critical skill, uh, and I really want to make sure you understand the GCF. All right, so here, uh, this expression, uh, 2y minus 30, is separated by a subtraction or a difference operator. So the format is, you're going to be thinking uh, the distributive property. Like, hey, what was the result of, you know, uh, what, what was multiplied together such that we ended up with 2y minus 30, okay? Well, the 2 is your first clue. So the format's always going to be the GCF, a parenthesis, and then if this is minus, there's going to be a minus here. If this is plus, so there's going to be a plus in here, okay? Now you're saying, all right, well, what's left inside? Okay, well, the answer is 2y minus 15, but if we look closely here, if 2 is the GCF, what remains? Well, what remains is 1y, okay? So that's where what you're going to um, have in this first spot. And then here, what remains is 3 and 5, which is, of course, 15. That's what's going to be in your second spot, okay? So if you're ever like, I always get confused on what's, uh, you know, uh, remains after you factor out the GCF, this is exactly what remains. Now, just to check that, here we have 2y minus 30 is equal to 2 times y minus 15. Again, this is the GCF, too, but you could be like, well, you know what? Let me go ahead and just multiply that 2 back in using the distributive property. So 2 times y, of course, is 2y minus 2 times 15, of course, is 30, and that checks, okay? So again, you know, there's, you know, in algebra, there's so many properties and things that you need to know. There are no shortcuts. If some of you are like, well, you know what? Uh, you know, maybe you took your chapter three test and you, you know, you did poorly on it. You're like, oh boy, I only got like a 59% on my chapter three test. Well, uh, maybe things will go better in chapter four. Okay. <laughs> this chapter is over with. I hated that chapter. It was terrible. I didn't understand anything. So I'm going to start a new chapter. I'm so excited because I have a chance to do really, really well in this next chapter. Guess what? Unfortunately, if you don't figure out what was going on in chapter three, it's going to impact your ability in chapter four. Okay. Math builds upon itself. And again, you know, of course, I've been, you know, uh, teaching math for decades. So, I mean, I have full comprehension and synthesis of this. And, you know, no student is really going to get to that level maybe the first year out. Okay. So, you don't have to, don't try to be perfect. Right. Of course, do your best. But your level of understanding will get better and better as you stick with math through the years. Okay. But my um, kind of real main message here is this when you're learning mathematics, focus as much as you can, concentrate and study the material, try to get the best understanding as possible because everything will go much, much smoother for you, not only in your um, current course, but in future courses as well. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.